Well, welcome back to a new episode. In this episode, we're going to talk about God's correction or God's discipline, if you want to word it like that. It's been an interesting experience as I had my own children. I look at my parents so differently. You know, when we're disciplined or corrected by our parents, we tend to resent it. But now that I have my own uh, son, I see it in a different light. When I correct my son, there's a reason for it. He's going in the wrong direction. He's going to be unpopular with people. You know, it's just not going to be good for him in the long run. So being my own parent now, or being a parent, I really see things differently. And it's the same with God. God is our parent. And if he corrects us, it's for a good reason. So we should look at him as being a loving parent. So let's keep learning together. And now we have some verses on God's correction or God's discipline. 1 Corinthians 11.32 But when we are judged, we are punished by the Lord, that we may not be condemned with the world. 2 Corinthians 4.16 Therefore we don't faint, but though our outward person is decaying, yet our inward person is renewed day by day. For our light affliction which is for the moment, works for us more and more exceedingly an eternal weight of glory. Deuteronomy 8.5 You shall consider in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, so Yahweh your God disciplines you. You shall keep the commandments of Yahweh your God to walk in his ways and to fear him. Hebrews 12, 5-6 You have forgotten the exhortation which reasons with you as with children. My son, don't take lightly the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when you are reproved by him. For whom the Lord loves, he disciplines, and chastises every son whom he receives. 12 or Hebrews 12, 7 to 8. It is for discipline that you endure. God deals with you as with children. For what son is there whom his father doesn't discipline? But if you are without discipline, of which all have been made partakers, then you are illegitimate and not children. Hebrews 12, 9. Furthermore, we had the fathers of our flesh to chasten us, and we paid them respect. Shall we not much rather be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live? Hebrews 12.10 For they indeed, for a few days, punished us as seemed good to them, but he for our profit, that we may be partakers of his holiness. Hebrews 12.11 All chastening seems for the present to be not joyous, but grievous. Yet afterward it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Proverbs 3.11 My son, don't despise Yahweh's discipline, neither be weary of his correction. Proverbs 3.12 for whom Yahweh loves, he corrects, even as a father reproves the son in whom he delights. Psalm 94, 12. Blessed is the man whom you discipline, Yah, and teach out of your law. Psalm 94, 13. That you may give him rest from the days of adversity, until the pit is dug for the wicked. May God add blessing to the reading of his word. Well, now for our new modern expression, the Good Samaritan. We've all heard of this. And this means a person who selflessly helps people in their time of need. And the story comes from Luke chapter 10, 
verse 30 to 37. But here's the main verse, Luke 10, 33. But a certain Samaritan, as he traveled, came where he was. When he saw him, he was moved with compassion. So as the story goes, you know, a priest went by and all the the normal people we would associate with helping people left this robber who was left by the side of the road. And only the Samaritan, who was hated by the Jews, uh, he's the one who helped him. I want to be a good Samaritan, help people in need. The Good Samaritan.